Hello everyone, I am back with the sixth video of the video series on class 8 science crop production and management and this is the last video of this video series on this particular chapter and trust me this is one of the most important videos because in this video we are only going to discuss questions. So these are all practice questions which will tell you how much of the concepts have you actually understood from this lesson. So my request would be to watch this entire video, do not skip any of the questions and and after watching this video, you should attempt to solve some questions which are generally given at the end of the chapter in your textbook. So try them out and I'm sure you'll be able to crack most of them. So let's get started. So now it is question time. So we will look at some of the questions and see if we have understood the lesson or not. So question number one, fill in the blanks. The same kind of plants grown and cultivated on a large scale at a place is called what? So when we grow the same type of plant, so instead of growing one tomato plant, if I grow thousands of tomato plants in a field, what is this called? It will be called a crop. The first step before growing crops is dash of the soil. The same thing, before giving your exams, you need to prepare for the exams. Similarly, before crop cultivation, cultivation, the soil has to prepare itself. So the first step is preparation of the soil. Damaged seeds would dash on top of water. So how do we distinguish between the good quality seeds and the damaged seeds? Damaged seeds will be hollow from inside and therefore they will be light. And since they are light, so what will happen? They will float on the surface of water. So damaged seeds would float on top of water. For growing a crop sufficient sunlight and dash and dash from the soil are essential. So what are the things that are the basic necessities for growth? One is sunlight. The other thing is water. Plants need water and that is why we have irrigation put into place. What other things do they get from the soil? Nutrients, yes. That is why we apply manures and fertilizers. So sunlight, water and nutrients are the three important things essential for the growth of a crop. Question number two. Match items in column A with those in column B. So here you have the items in both the columns. So if you see here, Kharif crops are those crops which are grown in, in the rainy season. So here where do you see the examples of Kharif crops? Yes, exactly. This is an example of Kharif crop, the paddy and maize. So they are Kharif crops. Rabi crops, which are the Rabi crops? These are the Rabi crops, wheat, gram and pea because they are grown in the winter season. Chemical fertilizers. So what do they do? Some of the examples are urea and phosphate. These are chemical fertilizers. They are rich in a nitrogen and phosphorus, but at the same time they are chemicals and they are prepared in industries. Organic manure. So manure is something which is prepared in the field and it is obtained from the plant and animal wastes. So it is obtained from animal excreta, cow dung, urine and plant wastes. So that's how we can match the two columns. Question number three. Give two examples of each, Kharif crop and Rabi crop. So Kharif crop is grown during the rainy season. So examples would include those which need more water like maize, soya bean, sugar cane. These are examples of Kharif crops. On the other hand, Rabi crops are grown in winter season which needs lesser water at the same time a moderate climate. So examples are wheat, gram and pea. Question number four. Write a paragraph in your own words on each of the following. Preparation of soil, sowing and weeding. So we have discussed all these. So let us see how do we write quick notes. So preparation of soil. As I had mentioned before, everything needs preparation before the actual work is done. So in a similar way, soil also needs to be prepared. And who will prepare the soil? Of course, the farmers. So how do they prepare the soil? The following activities are carried out to prepare the soil before growing crops. What are they? Plowing. So in plowing, what do we do? The soil is loosened so that the soil becomes more airy. 
once the soil becomes more airy, the roots will be penetrate, it will be able to penetrate deeper, so the growth will be better. Now when the root penetrates better, it will be able to absorb the better absorb nutrients and water better. Now again, when we loosen the soil, it, it, since the soil becomes more airy, it allows the growth of earthworms and microbes. And all these are farmers friends, they in, help to increase the soil fertility. So that way the soil fertility will also improve. Nutrient rich soil is made available to the plants. That's because soil is also present in layers. So normally the plants reach only till the upper layers of soil. Now when you loosen the soil, sometimes the lower layers also come or towards the upper side so that way nutrient rich soil will be made available to the plants next activity is watering where here we give water before plowing this is done only when the soil is very dry because plowing on a very dry soil is little difficult so that is why watering is done and finally the third activity that is leveling where once you loosen the soil so the upper surface becomes uh, messy or half a it is not smooth so to make the rough surface smooth we flatten the soil after breaking the bigger pieces into smaller pieces and this leveling is done with the help of a leveler so as you can see here it has a flat surface now as you move it it keeps rolling and that's how it, fl it flattens the soil so these are the three activities which together prepare the soil for crop cultivation. Next is sowing. Sowing is done once the soil preparation is done. So here seeds are scattered on the soil which is already prepared. So here we need to ensure that only good quality seeds are used for sowing because if the seeds are not of good quality obviously the crop productivity will also not be good. Now instead of sowing, doing it manually which will consume a lot of time and labor, a uh, machine is often used called seed drill. So this is how it looks like. So here you see, so these, those will have these kind of structures which will actually put or scatter the seeds. So some, there are some advantages of using seed drill like it will do it very uniformly, it will do it faster, there is no human labor involved and this entire setup is uh, present towards the end of the tractor. So it is done with the help of a tractor. The third one is weeding. So weeding is removal of weeds. I have mentioned before also weeds are the unwanted plants which grow along with our desired crops in the field. And what do they do? They start competing with our desired plants. So here if you see these are the weeds. So, the, so the, this is our wheat crop in the field and these are the weeds. So they have just grown out of nothing and now they also need water, light, air, space to grow. And so they will snatch away the same thing from the wheat crops and that's how our wheat crops will suffer a loss. So the weeds will grow at the cost of the wheat crops. So they can be removed using weedy sites which are chemicals that can kill weeds but they will not damage the crops. However, they need to be applied properly, they should be diluted that is mixed with water and only then sprayed on the field. And while spraying also farmers should ensure that they cover their mouth and nose so that they do not inhale any part of the weedy sites as they are harmful chemicals. Question number 5. Explain how fertilizers are different from manure. So here you can see a quick comparison between the two. So manures and fertilizers, both of them improves the soil uh, quality. So manure is a natural substance. So it is prepared from organic substance. It is prepared from the plant and animal wastes. Whereas fertilizers are in organic salts. For example, urea, phosphates. So they are fertilizers. Manure is less rich in plant nutrients whereas fertilizer is very rich in plant nutrients. So that is the advantage of fertilizer over manure. It provides nutrients in very large amount. Where is manure prepared? It is prepared in the fields because it is prepared from plant and animal wastes. So you really don't need any factory or industry setup. Whereas fertilizers are prepared in factories because they, these are basically chemicals which are being prepared. Manures are eco-friendly because they are non 
poisonous they are not toxic and at the same time they are a recycled product that is they are prepared from plant and animal wastes so it is kind of recycling but fertilizers when they are used in excess or if a fertilizer application is followed by irrigation they can cause water pollution in fact if it is given in excess amount it can even spoil the soil fertility so that means fertilizer is not at all eco friendly but manure is eco friendly but the advantage of fertilizer is that it is very rich in plant nutrients whereas manures are less rich in plant nutrients question number 6 what is irrigation describe two methods of irrigation which conserve water so irrigation is artificial application of water to soil to ensure growth of agricultural crops so basically instead of completely depending on rain so we have introduced a method where we are i mean not completely dependent on rain even if there is no rain we can artificially apply water to the soil now the question is how do we apply water to the soil there are many different ways so here we will mention two methods the two methods which help to conserve water they are basically the modern methods of irrigation which have been introduced now to save water because the traditional methods like manually pouring water bringing in what bringing out water from the wells and then scattering it throughout the field that used to involve a lot of water wastage so to prevent that these modern methods have come up so one of them is the sprinkler system so what happens here is we have small we have these rotating nozzles located at periodic intervals and then water comes out of this like this now these nozzles are rotating so the water gets spread over a particular radius here about against each nozzle and that's how the entire field get watered so that is one system the other system is the drip system where water falls drop wise near the roots of each plant so here also you see from the well there comes a main pipeline the main pipeline is connected to the sub main pipeline and from there these perpendicular pipelines are located so the water will be coming out in drops and that is how this prevents any sort of water wastage so these are the two systems which are quite prevalent these days and they also conserve water question number 7 if wheat is sown in the carrot season what would happen discuss so wheat is what kind of a crop it is a rabi crop so it needs less water but in kharif season it is the rainy season so that times there is lot of rain so lot of water so what will happen however need wheat needs moderate temperature and irrigation for good growth so it doesn't need too much of water but in kharif season rains would lead to water logging which would adversely affect the wheat productivity so wheat doesn't want uh, water logging so if there is water logging then the wheat plants productivity will reduce so if wheat is sown in kharif season then the productivity will drastically reduce question number 8 explain how soil gets affected by continuous plantation of crops in a field now what happens if you continuously cultivate crops in a particular field in the same field you are continuously planting crops so what will happen every time the crops will take in the minerals and the nutrients from the soil now there is no gap which is getting which the soil is getting so the soil is continuously by being used up for uh, nutrients by the plants so as a result over a period of time the soil will have lack of nutrients because most of the nutrients will get used up by the plants so there will be nutrients depletion in the soil lack of nutrients in the soil so that is one thing the second thing is when there will be no nutrients in the soil then the soil fertility will also reduce so these are the two major impacts that the soil quality will decrease that is the soil fertility will decrease and there will be lack of nutrients in the soil so these will be the two major impacts if we continuously cultivate crops in a particular field question number 9 what are weeds and how can we control them weeds are the unwanted plants that compete for nutrient space water and light and therefore they adversely affect the crop growth so they just grow on their own but once they start growing they also need the same basic things which our desired crop needs for example in this wheat field the weeds also need nutrient space water light and our wheat crops also need the same things so they both have competition with each other and as a result the weeds grow at the cost of 
the nutrients which could have gone to our wheat crops. So how do we control them? By application of weedicides which are chemicals that kill weeds alone and they do not damage the crops. So that's how we can control them. Question number 10. Arrange the following boxes in proper order to make a flow chart of sugarcane crop production. So but we don't see anything in the boxes. No, we do have stuffs. So these are there in the boxes. Now we have to arrange them in particular order that which is going to happen at the first, then what is going to happen. So that means we will have to arrange it in a particular sequence. So the first thing that has to happen for sugarcane crop production is first of all, we have to prepare the soil. So this is going to be the first step, soil preparation. Once the soil is prepared, then what do we do? Now, in the preparation of the soil, what are the activities that take place? Plowing has to take place. We plow the wheat. So now, once plowing is done, then what do we do? So, we prepare the soil, we plow the feed and then what do we do? We provide manures to the field. So, once that is done, then what do we do? We sow the seeds, that is we scatter the seeds. So, once, once the seeds are also scattered, then what do we do? Then we have to provide water. So we have to irrigate the field. So once irrigation is also done, then comes the harvesting because now your crops will gradually mature over a period of time. So you cut the crops. So once cut, crops are cut, then they are then the grains are separated from the uh, the straw that is uh, threshing is done, and after that the crop is sent to the sugar factory. So this is how the entire process takes place. Now sometimes plowing is followed by sowing which in turn is followed by manuring. But most of the times manuring is done before so that the soil first is prepared completely by providing manures, fertilizers etc. So let us look at question number 11. Give one word for the following. Providing water to the crops. So artificially how do we water to the crops? What is that process called? Yes, that is called irrigation. So the advantage of this process is that we do not have to depend completely on rain, rain for agriculture. Keeping crop grains for a long time under proper conditions. So that is what we call as storage. So that we can keep it well protected from insects or microbes so that it can be used later. Certain plants of the same kind grown on a large scale that is crop. A machine used for cutting the matured crop. So the cutting of matured crop is called harvesting and this type of machine is called harvester. A rabi crop that is also one of the pulses. So some of the examples of rabi crops are wheat, gram etc. So you can say gram is an example of a rabi crop which is also a pulse. A process of separating the grain from shaft. So the process of separating grain from chaff is actually called threshing. This process is actually called threshing. So one such process could be winnowing. So winnowing is an example of a threshing process where the grain gets separated from the chaff. So these are uh, the one words for each of the description. So we are finally done with crop production and management and I hope this was useful. So if at all you have any suggestions for us, do let us know in the comment section. We would be more than happy to hear from you. And last but not the least, if you have liked the video, in fact, share the entire video series with your friends so that they can also get benefited from the series. So I will meet you all very soon with a new chapter, with a new lesson, very, very soon. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.